Hi there, welcome to another .NET Conf Talk. My name is Dimitri Lylan and I'm really glad you're joining me today. And today I'm going to do a session on XAML tools for WPF and UWP developers. We're going to go take a tour through XAML tools. I'm going to do a lot of demos. Hopefully everything will work. We're going to look at features that are um, you know, existing features you can use today, features that are coming. So we're going to do some roadmap and we're even going to look kind of further out if we get time to say this is what's really coming on the pike in the future and we want your feedback on it as well. So hey, let's get, get going. Before I jump into the details of my talk, I'm just going to mention that three days of content and desktop talks have been kind of spread out across all three days. So if desktop development is something you're interested in, I hope you can check out one of the other sessions. So there they are. Um, they are also in the agenda. The agenda link is down below and everything will be available on demand if you missed it or will miss it in the future. All right, so my session. So we're going to start off uh, by looking at XAML tools. Uh, XAML tools, I'm a PM of XAML tools for WPF and UWP, uh, for, for WPF and UWP applications, and I work closely with Xamarin Forms. So all the XAML teams uh, work closely together. And in my talk, I'm going to cover what's new in tooling around hard reload designer and the code editor. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit at the end around modernization of applications using XAML islands and uh, just touch on roadmap just a little bit, and uh, hopefully that'll be a good talk. All right, let's jump in. So this demo uh, was going to be a code demo, but I'm going to apologize and do some screenshots, but it's a cool demo, so I hope you enjoy it. Unfortunately, my VM kind of died this morning. Thanks, VM. Uh, but let's talk about uh, a new feature we're working on in the XAML designer. So if you're a WPF or UWP developer and you, you know, use the XAML designer, we're adding features to, to that capability, right, to that, to that space. Um, we have been thinking for a long time what feature would be a good way to increase developer productivity. So something we're going to ship in a future Visual Studio update release as a preview uh, flagged feature, so you'll have to turn it on, is XAML suggested actions. Think about it as a light bulb on top of controls. So we're starting off with a well-defined set of controls that we're going to enable this on. And a light bulb is going to make all the common properties of those controls available. So here's stack panel. Here's a label. We even have uh, nice color pickers we're going to build into that. Uh, here's the image control, things like source, visibility, very much common properties. So as I kind of go down this list of controls, you see that these properties are probably the ones you often ha have to go set. And today, if you were to go into the properties panel, it's kind of hard to find the most common properties. Um, this is hopefully going to alleviate that. In the future, it will even expand to other capabilities as well. So it's a cool feature we're working on. It's going to ship in a future preview. 16.4, one of the update trains, one of the preview trains, uh, you know, we'll put it into the release notes when it's available. It's going to support the controls up on the screen right now that are listed, but it is going to be extendable. We are going to add it to more controls in the future, and we're looking at actions because sometimes you have a control that has pr properties you want to change, and that's great. Other times you have a control like a tab view. You need to add another tab. So instead of having to know how to do that XAML or have some other paradigm in the UI that lets you enable, you know, to, to add a new tab easily, we're going to try to see if these quick action, suggested actions work well for you. So check it out when we make it available. Just wanted to show you one feature facing thing and unfortunately my demo failed. All right. So from here on in, it's demo time. So I'm going to jump right in and talk about uh, a story that could have been a little bit better day one, but such is life. So uh, today, uh, this week, yesterday, WPF Core shipped. That means WPF Core as a framework is GA. Um, and if you install Visual Studio 16.3, that means you have the tooling. Unfortunately, the designer is off by default. We screwed up. We made a little mistake. So I'll show you how to enable it. If you go to, uh, you know, if you have a WPF project, so this is a WPF project right here, you go to tools, you go to options, and you go to preview features. If you enable use preview of the .NET Core SDK, and you restart it, and we'll do that just to kind of prove the point. So let's restart the application real quick. And I should have my little demo app okay let's get this thing open all right so you can see designer is loading uh, totally our fault sorry about that uh, but designer is there and we're going to service this release to make it available but i just showed you how to enable it right away and start using it now the one thing i do want to point out is that uh, and let's, let's make sure i have the right uh, i have so many of these little applications um, sorry i just need to make sure that i'm looking at the right one all right, yep, this is the right one. All right, so we have um, 
uh, multiple designers that my team works on. So some of our designers, you know, one, one of them is for .NET Framework, WPF, one of the .NET Core, and one is for UWP. So if you really pay attention, you switch between those three, you're going to see some slight differences. Those are not bugs. Those are differences that we've sort of made decisions on. We're here to hear your feedback on it. But for the most part, most of the features of the designer work the same across all of them. Um, so everything you would expect in this designer to work works here. So if I go to Toolbox and I go ahead and I drag a button, that works. And if I resize the button, that works as well. XAML is changing. Uh, one tip, uh, lots of people don't realize there's an edit template feature in here that can create a copy of a style. This is accessible through right-clicking a control on the design surface or in the document outline. So it's, it's really available anywhere. And if you right-click on that and say, yes, created within my application here, uh, you get a bunch of XAML. So uh, designers are here. Uh, quite a powerful feature. Uh, some of the features that we also get asked, uh, would you add the feature? And we say it's there and it's our fault you don't know about it. So we're working to fix that. But one of the cool features is regions. Uh, so I'm going to show that feature right now. Region button style. So this came in through surveys. People were asking me, Dimitri, uh, can you please add this feature? And I wanted to show that it's there. So we can add a region. And then we can collapse the region. So region begin, make sure it's right. And region, <laughs> am I having my first demo fail of the day? Oh, Jesus. You know, when something just works every single time, well, well I can assure you this, uh, this feature does work. I've tested it so many times. I'm not sure why this is misbehaving. Um, but there you go. Uh, sooner or later, one of your demos will fail. But basically, regions are in there. Give it a shot. If you hit a bug like this, please let us know. We're here to make it better. So I uh, just wanted to show the designers there. We have region support in the XAML editor, and we have the ability to edit default styles or templates. So from there, I'm going to jump into the meat of the demo. And we're going to talk about an application. We're going to use this application for the rest of the talk that I've been building. Um, using some newer bits than what you would have access to, but for the most part, all the things they show will work with some minor exceptions, and I will point those out as we go. So here's my project. It's, uh, it's here for demonstrative purposes. There's really not a lot of code to it. It's just a basic WPF core app. I have a view model with some dummy data. It's like a fake email client you know, that we're building. It's really, really poor. And there's, a, there's an object called email, and I'm going to do some binding to it in real time. So with this application, uh, I'm going to just reset it back to the original state and just run the app and show you that it's really bare bones. There's absolutely no code in here right now. And then we'll begin coding. And I'll talk about some of the features. So first things first, uh, there's a bunch of tools that are related to the hot reload feature that I'm about to demo. The first tool is the in-app toolbar. This is the toolbar that uh, appears in the application itself at the top. It's collapsible. One of the new features we added is we made it movable left and right because sometimes we'll block UI. If you collapse it, it's pretty small, but still, you know, that wasn't sufficient in all scenarios. We also added this, uh, this right-hand side, hot reload available, because uh, developers were not, were not aware if this feature was working or not. There's some scenarios where the feature doesn't work. So we added the message that says unavailable or available so that it's very clear if hot reload is on. And you can collapse that away if, if that's not helpful to you. Clicking on the link will take you to documentation. Both the documentation says how to use the feature in this case, or if it's unavailable, how to resolve that as well. Uh, so it's a really important tool, and hopefully you find it useful. Uh, one of the things that, that a lot of people don't realize also is there's a button in the Live Visual tree that if you click the button, it completely goes away from the application. So it really doesn't have to be there if that's not something you want. In our case, we're going to put it back in. And I want to show Hot Reload. And Hot Reload is a feature that changes the app as the app is running. This app is running right now. I've cheated a little bit. You know, I've created a view model and I created all the placeholders because when you're running with Hot Reload, you, Visual Studio will block you from um, adding a, a new control or changing the structure of the project, right? So you kind of have to make all of that available. And while I can edit C Sharp using C Sharp Edit and Continue, uh, view models don't respond very well just because of how it's architected. So I put all that in place, and now I want to show you how Hot Reload and some other features make this really good experience. So with that, I'm going to show you the first, um, the first feature, which I'm just going to add a button just for the just for the sake of demonstration purposes. So I'm going to add a button in here. The button will be 100 by, by 50. All right, there's the button. And if I go back to an application, uh, I see the button. It just appeared magically because of hot reload. Now, this window, I'd actually love for it to be visible at all times. So I'm going to go in here and say topmost, and I'm going to say true. 
And now the applications will be visible all the time. These are changes that are happening to XAML and being reflected in real time. So what if, let's say, I, I wanted to learn more about the button, see the C-sharp code behind it, and I didn't know where the button was in source. In this case, it's easy. In most more complex applications, really complicated. We have a button called Enable Selection. You click on that, click on the control, and in our live visual tree, you can see the button. And this is where I want to highlight a new feature that's coming soon. It's not yet available, but this feature is coming soon. It's called Just My XAML. If I turn Just My XAML off, you get a much bigger live visual tree. We show you everything in a live visual tree, and that's useful sometimes. But by default, we find that only the XAML that you've written is useful. So we're adding a feature called Just My XAML. It'll be on by default. There'll be a setting to turn it off by default in case you want the old behavior. So that's pretty cool. And uh, this is basically giving you all the flexibility here to uh, to build your app as uh, app runs. Now, actually, let's start building the app for real. I'm going to go ahead and kill this temporary button and show you a feature that we've uh, uh, gotten kind of by default because other teams are doing work called Intelli IntelliCode. With IntelliCode, uh, you get stars in IntelliSense of the most likely actions that, that our AI analysis shows that you might take, so RML. Um, that means we've looked at GitHub, we looked at open source projects, and we've made some decisions based on that data for XAML, C Sharp, and other languages. So here it's saying to me, there's a really high type probability that you want to add uh, grid column definition, grid row definition. In fact, I do. So as I do that, it says, hey, there's a really good chance that now you want to add a column definition. Yes, I do. And as I'm doing that, it makes writing code just so much easier. So here I am doing row definition, row definition. I'm like tab completing through this, like no, no tomorrow. So it's really, really performant. And how do we load making all these changes come alive for us in the app itself? So as we go through, um, I was going to write all the code, but uh, as, as I realize how little time I have, I'm just going to cheat a little bit and cut and paste a few times. You don't really need to watch me type. That's fine, right? All right, so first of all, let's add some meat to this application. So I'm going to paste this thing right here. All right, and as soon as I do that, my app comes alive. I just created a, a list box. Um, I created, uh, sorry, a list view, and if I click on the list view, there's, a, there's an area here where the details of the email should be coming up. Um, I've also created, uh, created some references to some styles that, that should be in my resource dictionary. Now I have a resource dictionary, so I'm gonna go ahead and create that. So I'm gonna go in here. And I'm going to go to my solution. So here's my merged in uh, resource dictionary. So I'm going to put some code in there, save that off, go back. So now the error went away. All of a sudden, my application slightly changed. So as you can see, it's actually working in real time. Hey, let's take it out. My application changed, put it back in. Application changed again. Very powerful feature in that sense. Um, we also have a cool feature in uh, available as part of the in-app toolbar, which lets you see exactly the alignments of things. So as you select, you can see how that selection is aligned to other things. So we draw grid lines based on um, enable selection. So you say enable selection, you click on something, and then it enables you to show, to show the grid lines around it and across. Very useful feature in more complex applications. Right there, you can see exactly where rem rem reminder baby shopping ends, and you can see how that aligns with that was useful. So a cool little feature, display adorners available. And then with the selection, I'm able to once again click, uh, click on here and then see exactly oh where's this border defined then click on define view see where uh, where this thing is available in my source code so it's very powerful in that sense now let's keep building this application up I'm going to add some more of the code that I wrote before so I'm going to add uh, another piece here which is a text block and and think about this my app has been running the whole time I am not having to switch switch around so as soon as I added Another one, let's in fact collapse this. This is where collapsing is useful. As I'm switching, um, it's working, right? It's displaying the contents of, of the email. Now behind the scenes, this is just all in VVM. I've got uh, bindings happening and the bindings are, here, let's lower this so I can show you. We've got bindings to an emails collection, observable collection of, of email objects, and we have a selected item binding two-way to the selected item. And then we have uh, the, the text, um, the text block binding to the selected item that body, everything just works, and you can go ahead and, and say uh, title, so you can really change this in real time. Body works. If you misspell something, it's just not going to work until you fix it, but you're getting errors inside of your output, so if you're watching that, you can see if you just has, have spelling errors that are coming in there. All right, so there you go. The application is being built up, but that's not all this thing can do. Let's go a little bit deeper. I'm going to go back to my, to my cut and paste window here and 
put in a status bar into this application. So right now, no status bar. If we were building a real client, we'd have a status bar. So I'm going to add the status bar in. And now we have a status bar. It says connected, works great. But in reality, uh, a lot of the, the way that you would compose a real you know, WPF or UWP application is by using controls to move some of the logic out. So in this case, I want to move my status bar into a control. Now, I've cheated a little bit. I've already put a control in here. So I have the status bar placeholder. Um, if, if you didn't have this, you would have to stop right now and go, go ahead and make that happen. So in here, I will select this and I will say, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut this out because I don't need that. And I am going to first add a reference to the control. So all these you know, normal XAML things, MLNS says, uh, oh, I did this before. I, I uh, should have cleaned it up, but it's OK. We'll do it again, just because I want to show that everything you basically need to do is really available in real time. So here I am, and I'm typing control, and I'm getting IntelliSense. IntelliSense showing me this is probably the control that I want to, I want to highlight, so I'm doing that. And as I go down, I can now put the control in here. So I'm going to go down here and I'm going to say control. There's the control. I'm going to put its grow, uh, grid row, grid column span, close that out. And right now it looks a little bit messed up because now my status bar lost the grid row and column span. So I'm going to remove it. I'm going to go and I'm going to open up uh, the control. I'm going to paste it in there and everything is back to normal. Very powerful. You can literally be sitting here building your app, especially if you, again, get your, um, get your view model and everything working correctly. So uh, let's dive a little bit deeper on the tools that are available because this isn't everything. So let's say I want to play around with the status bar, but now I'm shifting scenarios a little bit. I want to make changes that I don't want to commit. Right now, hot reload is all about like you're changing XAML, and as long as you, you, so you don't, don't delete the XAML you changed, don't undo the XAML you've changed, it's going to wind up in your application sooner or later. Now, what if you want to just really try something crazy or experimental, and you just want to focus on the session that you're working in now? So we have a tool for you as well. And I want to explain one confusion that I've heard customers say. Um, they're like, well, there's already a properties panel. Wouldn't they use a properties panel to change properties? You would if you want them to, be, again, be committed to the source code. But if you just want to play with the application as it's running and just have it be temporary, we have another tool for you. Let me go ahead and show that right now. So I'm going to select the status bar control. I'm going to open it up, and I'm going to go to the status item. In fact, I'm going to go all the way down to the text block inside of it, the one that says connected. And I'm going to click this button right here called Show Properties. Now, this will show something called the Live Property Explorer. This is another window. It's not the Properties window. It's the Live Properties window. So it's the one that lets you make changes that are temporary. So let's go ahead and make some temporary changes just for fun. First of all, I don't know if connected is the, is the word I want to say because I'm like, well, connected works about um, connected live, right? Will that work? Will that sort of fit? So hit enter. Okay, yeah, that's fitting. The status bar is not breaking. Okay, that's good. Um, I actually want to change font, so I'm going to go in here and I'm going to say font size. Oh, what if the font was 24? Oh, that's not going to work. <laughs> uh, font 24 is definitely going to be is going to be too much. Uh, how about font 18? Uh, still cuts off a little bit, right? Not really great. It's 14. 14. Up oh, 14 looks good. So now I know which which font I want to make. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to say font size 14. Uh, so this enables you to, to play with the application in a way that you can you can kind of go crazy and then you can reset everything back back to the default values. Or if you just stop debugging, it will reset itself. So it's very much safe to go ahead in there and make lots of changes that, that you want to try. So this is hot reload. I've, I've gone through and I've, and I've built like a little application that sort of feels, feels like a real application, right? We've got everything working, and we can see clearly what our tree looks like. Um, so some of the other uh, features that I want to point out that might, you know, might not be familiar to everybody is some of the work we've done, so I'm going to minimize the app because I want to focus on the XAML window right now. So some of the work we've done in the XAML itself. Um, one of the things that you, you might want to you know, uh, get help on because it's not clear where something is, is, for example, static resources like listbox email style. Where, where is the listbox email style located? I, I'm not sure where, where the XAML is. If you right click on it and you say peak definition, you can actually look at the definition and you can see the file that it's in. And it's one of these temporary files that you can pin up. It's just like peak definition in other languages, and that works. It works in a lot of places. Give it a try. If it's not working somewhere for you, let me know. Uh, if there's a scenario we didn't think of, we'd love to hear from you, but that's a cool feature. You can also right click and say, uh, or use F12, you can say go to definition. So you can actually just jump straight to the file and make changes there. So if I wanted to go in here and I wanted to make the fonts even bigger, there you go. The font became even bigger. 
Again, Hot Reload is still working as we're doing all of these, all of these things. Another feature that, uh, that I, I've talked to people, they're, they're not familiar, we have it, but it's actually really useful for really complicated applications. They might have, like, let's say, uh, a lot of resources at the top and you want to look at something, we're looking at XAML at the bottom. We have the splitter right here. If you drag the splitter, just like in other places, you can stay at the top and the top one, you can scroll down to the bottom one and you can you know, make changes, cut and paste values, things like that. Very useful feature and um, definitely worth knowing all of these little tips and trips, uh, tic uh, tips and tricks to make it easier for you to build your XAML application. So I'm going to go ahead and actually move this back up so that works and now it's back into you know, being one single window. All right, uh, let me make sure that I've shown you everything that I wanted to. All right, I think I did in this case. So let's uh, look at one more feature here. So I'm going to stop debugging. This is a feature that's available uh, and it's best to look at it when, you, when your application gets a bit more complicated. That's why I kind of kept it today. And this is a document outline, really un undervalued window in, in the this, in this XAML tool space. Um, we're in fact thinking of maybe doing more with this in the future. We'll see how that goes. But basically this window enables you to see the, all the controls that you've written inside of your application. And you can go ahead and um, look at the designer and you can make things you know, visible or hidden, so, so it has that ability. In my case, I don't have much to show in that sense, but, but you get the idea. So these are, these are temporary changes that don't apply to your, to your running app. Um, it's design time properties that you're changing. You can also right click on a control in here and you can edit a style and create a copy. Just like we saw, you can click on view source and it'll select where in the source um, this is. So think about document outline as, as the control that you, sh you can use when you're, when you're using the designer and the XAML editor, the app is not running. And then when you switch to hot reload, as your app is running, that's where the live visual tree, the LVT as we call it, is available for you and lets you, lets you do everything you need to do there. All right, uh, I also want to point out a couple of things, like we're, we're constantly making this better. So I'll give you some examples. Um, there was a, a deadlock error, like we, we messed up. We had an error where if you said um, uh, in WPF application, go to definition, we actually froze Visual Studio. Really sorry about that. We did not mean to do that. Uh, we fixed it. It's in one of the recent updates. There was also a bug where as you're typing IntelliSense, for example, in the code editor, um, you, you would get uh, static resources for, let's say, a list view. And we would, in theory, only show you the styles that apply to target of type list view. But we had a bug where we were showing everything. So things like that are being fixed. We're not making a lot of noise about it, but we know these, these are behaviors no, nobody wanted to have. And uh, if you find behaviors that you're like, why is this working kind of strange, let us know. We, we could miss something too, but we really want to make it better. So these are investments that are going in for WPF and UWP developers. We're doing everything for everyone, everyone, every type of customer that we have. All right, in the last couple of minutes, I want to show you one more demo. So uh, one thing I will point out is that we're switching gears quite a bit here, but it's really worth knowing about. Uh, so I'm going to switch over. So these are just the hot reload docs I had open just to demonstrate like we have hot reload documentation. That's where the link goes if you, if you click on the link. But let's switch to another, another doc completely to, um, to XAML Islands. XAML Islands is, is a technology that's been being worked on for a while. It's a technology that enables you as a WPF or WinForm developer to host UWP controls inside of your application. So let's jump back into my slides for just a couple of minutes here. And just in the interest of time, I'm going to go quickly through it and just explain that, you know, XAML Islands, think about it as if you have, uh, if you think about UWP as a whole, there's a lot to it. There's an app model, there's MSAX, there's all of these things. But one of the biggest parts of it is the controls. And if you want the controls in your application, XAML Islands is the way we've enabled. This just wasn't possible without XAML Islands. The work that my team is doing for a future release, probably sometime in a 16.4 timeframe, is we're making it so that implementing XAML Islands will not require you to, to do manual steps. Today, there are some manual steps that you would need to do. We're making it so you don't need to do manual steps. And um, the way XAML Islands work today is requires 1903 uh, version of Windows. They are looking to backport XAML Islands to, to older versions of Windows, but for now that's the thing. And it allows you to host inside of a C++ app, as, you know, Win32 app, a WinForms or WPF application, and then you host your, your controls in there. And there's all these wrappers that we've built. Uh, I would say just look at the documentation. That's the best place to get all the, all the information. But there's lots of wrapper controls that the team's built. It's open source. 
and it's pretty easy to implement. Um, you, it's it's kind of basic. There's not a lot of tooling support. It doesn't give you uh, all, all the niceness of how to reload designers, but it does work in your application. So if you're blocked, this would unblock you. And just a quick demo of what that can look like. I will show you something that's super simple. This application literally has three list boxes, but it's very significant. Um, the first list box on the very left is the one that comes with WPF. This is a WPF core app with a WPF list box. Nothing to see here. This next one is XAML Island. It's, an, it's, a, it's, a, it's a natively used, um, I'm doing data binding using, using C Sharp, so I'm doing it in C Sharp just to kind of demonstrate that that's possible. And then we have a third one which I've styled, so it's even possible to style it as well because I'm hosting it in a custom control, so I have full control over style, look and feel. And uh, I'll have the sample available as part of the link. So that's kind of my demo. All of this is, is here for you. I wish I had more time and I'll be back on. We have community stand-ups and other things we're doing via toolbox to talk more about this and uh, thank you so much for joining me if you have questions please tweet at me or email me thanks a lot